Hello guys. Welcome to Cinema Recaps, please like and subscribe. Are you looking to watch an interesting sci-fi thriller movie? Well good news, I've got a good one for you, about a zombie apocalypse in Korea. Remember, spoiler alert. The movie is called Alive and it was released in 2020. Without further ado, let's get started. The movie starts by showing us a young man living in an apartment called Junwoo. He loves to spend his time playing games all day. He is alone in his apartment, about to play a game when the news on the television broadcasts a mass panic in the city. Not long after Jun sees his neighbors in his apartment complex running around in panic as well. He has to face his worst nightmare because the mass panic was due to the group of people who started to insanely attack others while acting and looking like zombies. As the zombie outbreak progresses, the infected start to attack and eat the uninfected people. Then suddenly he hears someone knocking on his front door. When he opens, his neighbor barges into his apartment. We see that June was a technologically capable gaming streamer before this catastrophe began. After his neighbor barged in, June tried to get rid of him by threatening him with a knife because June noticed that the neighbor has been bitten. But it's too late, his neighbor turns into a zombie in front of his eyes and June tries his hardest to get him out of his apartment and locks the door shut. He then blocks his front door with his fridge. June tries to call his parents and family but he doesn't get any response. Fortunately, he receives a message from his parents telling him that they're safe and that he must fight to stay alive for their sake. It is now nighttime, Jun Woo starts to realize that he needs to preserve his remaining food stock because it's going to run out. That night he goes to sleep wishing that tomorrow the world will return to normal. Jun Woo is wakened up by a broadcast on TV, where a reporter announces that the zombie outbreak is caused by a variant of a virus. He then tries to check his social media and a lot of people are posting for help. He decides to make a similar post and tags his location, while still keeping up on updates about the zombie outbreak from TV broadcasts. He then gets up to check his surrounding area using his custom-made drone. Unfortunately, the whole area around him is full of people that have been infected by the zombie virus. As the second night draws, the city around him turns dark, the electricity seems to start shutting down. June's internet connection is also compromised because of the outbreak. There are sounds of a commotion from down the road as a policewoman attempts to escape a horde of zombies that are surrounding her by shooting them. When she realizes that she's out of bullets, she tries to kill herself but fails. She will become one of the zombies once they inevitably bite her. June tries to help her by screaming to attract the zombies' attention, but it was already too late, she has been dragged by the horde. Instead, June's scream attracts a big zombie's attention, and it tries to get to him by busting his door open. The big zombie successfully enters June's room and rushes to him, but June manages to trap the zombie and get him to fall off the balcony. He tries to blockade his door again, before trying to record the events he experienced that day at the end of the night. The next day, June watches the TV broadcasts hoping for some good news. He is stressed out, which is a given for anyone that is in his current situation. He opens a bottle of whiskey from his dad's liquor cabinet and drinks it. His sustenance is in a bad condition, the only food left is a cup of instant noodles and his water supply runs out later on during the day. Water is June's most pressing problem. He tries to record his story again on a camera as he gets more and more desperate. He then realizes that there is a device that can be used to communicate without the internet, which is a radio. June tries to make his emergency makeshift radio, but he fails because he needs an antenna or headset for it to work, meanwhile, all of his devices are wireless. The next scene shows us a few days later, Jun Wu have only survived on drinking alcohol and getting drunk as a result. He starts hallucinating that his parents have come back home alive. Out of the blue, the internet connection comes back online for a few moments. He receives a voicemail from his family, he hears his parents' last living moments in his dad's office as the zombies surround them. Jun falls into a state of rage and sorrow for the death of his family, he destroys all of his stuff and goes outside to release his anger by killing every zombie he encounters. While he kills the zombies in a fit of rage, he gets cornered by a horde of zombies. He, fortunately, escapes them, hiding and then running back to his room, almost getting caught by a blind zombie in the process. Another few days pass and we witness a loud explosion happening. It seems that the army is bombing zombies using an aircraft in a different part of the city. Jun Wu is in even more despair as he attempts to commit suicide. Just before he's going to do it, a laser pointer's light distracts him and he withdraws his plan to kill himself. The one shining a laser at him is another survivor that is living in the apartment across Jun's. 
Her name is Kim Yu. She tries to communicate with him by giving him a signal with the laser, and they manage to agree to talk again the next morning. We see that Kim is also running out of water like June. The next morning comes, Kim realizes that June is running late. He then uses his phone to type out his name and shows it to her, and she does the same using a tablet. Out of nowhere, a zombie comes crashing into Kim's apartment, but it gets stuck on a trap that she made, a spiked chair. She then kills the zombie with an axe. The next day, we see Jun Wu struggling to contain his hunger because his food has run out. Kim helps him out by setting a zip line across their apartments and sharing some of her food with him, which makes him very grateful for her help. While they were trying to set up the zip line, a cable failed to reach Jun Wu and now is just lying on the street below their apartments, the other end being tied up to a table in Kim Yu's apartment. A zombie that looks like a firefighter then climbs up the cable, pulling the table which then hits her and causes her to pass out. The zombie manages to enter her apartment, meanwhile Jun Wu tries to divert its attention using his drone. It doesn't work, but thankfully Kim Yu wakes up at the last second and manages to cut off the zombie's hand. At night during the same day, Jun Wu plans to go out to gather some supplies. He sneaks out of his apartment and tries to find supplies in the other apartments. Suddenly, a zombie jumps and rushes onto him. He ran and survives the zombie, bringing home some supplies like food, clothes, and a pair of walkie-talkies. He sends some of the supplies to Kim Yu. The next morning, both of them shares a bond through a conversation, with Jun Wu being thankful that Kim Yu stopped his suicide attempt, and her being grateful that he shared some of his supplies to her. Despite the awful zombie outbreak situation they're living through, they have a good conversation comparing the best way to cook an instant noodle. The next scene shows the horde of zombies being more vigilant, and Kim Yu accidentally pushing over a shelf as she tries to hide. This causes a lot of zombies to try to get in through her front door. She's shaking with fear, but Jun Wu tries to help her by disturbing the horde of zombies by calling her apartment complex's phone next to her. Both of them prepares their weapons, readying themselves to escape to a lower level. Kim Yu ties up a rope, ready to scale down the apartment onto the street from her balcony. She goes first and manages to reach the ground safely, but is overwhelmed by the horde of zombies surrounding her. Jun Wu is amused by the way she handles the horde as he also scales down the building with the rope. He joins her to fight the horde and both of them escape into the building's ground floor. They secure the entry and use the elevator to go up. They reach their destination but a zombie sees them and calls the horde to come. Jun attempts to block the horde while Kim tries to open the door. Then a stranger throws a smoke grenade at the horde, saving them both. Even though they were saved, Kim does not trust this stranger that easily because she knows that there's supposed to be no one in here. As they share drinks and stories, Kim still doubts the stranger. The stranger tells them that a rescue team will come for them soon, and share some canned food with Jun and Kim. They cry tears of joy, but then Jun falls asleep due to the drugs in the food, as Kim attempts to negate the drug's effects. However, she doesn't succeed, the stranger ties Kim's wrist and brings her to the bedroom to lock her in. The stranger is trying to give her to his wife as food because she is turned into a zombie. Jun struggles to wake up but manages to point a gun at the stranger. Things get very quiet, as the stranger opens the door and checks on his wife's condition. The wife rushes on top of the stranger, and he decides to give up his life so that his wife can beat him. Kim then shoots the couple in their heads out of pity, but the loud gunshot attracts the zombies near them. She tells Jun to kill her, but he is doubting whether he should do it or not. As he doubts, they hear the sound of a helicopter passing through outside. They both run to the rooftop as fast as they can, a horde of zombies catching up behind them. Jun guards the stairs as Kim arrives at the rooftop. He eventually joins her and they both fight the horde in despair as they do not see any sign of help coming for them. They finally use up their last bullet, and as they get ready to succumb to the horde of zombies attack, an army helicopter comes to save them by shooting the horde and taking them into the helicopter. Jun Wu and Kim Yu smile happily as they look at each other, thankful that they both survived. The movie ends with a narration explaining that the electricity and connection networks have been restored and the world is now back online. The military has been executing search and rescue missions to find more survivors, by using social media posts to pinpoint their locations. That is it for today's video of the movie Alive. Thank you for tuning in. Please remember to like and subscribe and turn on notifications to catch future videos release. I'll see you again in the next video. See ya.